Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson, the module leader for Tech1502 and this is the overview summary video for the 23rd lecture uh, which is entitled Social Action and Development. And what I want to do in this session is to run over some topics that we're going to cover in more detail in the second year. Uh, so I've brought forward one of the lectures that I do at the beginning of that session and we'll, we'll work through it and so you've got an idea of what we're looking for in terms of uh, how we'll be working uh, next year. And what I want to cover, what, what the title of this is Social Action and Development. And one of the um, distinctions that I think we have made about community media is that it's not necessarily about media. Media is important and how we understand media is very important. But actually, community media serves a different purpose or the, 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 the sense of social engagement is stronger in community media uh, because it's driven from a grassroots basis rather than being imposed from a, if you like, a top-down basis. So the idea is, is here to think about kind of what forms and uh, uh, of uh, activity community media represents that are part of a community development process uh, and a, a social action process. So there's a number of factors that are going to be of concern to us, uh, which we need to address, and they are... Uh, you know, we live in a globalised world and there's a kind of uh, a, a sense of um, interdependence, but also a sense of kind of pushback about those interdependencies as well. Uh, but also we've got a kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, as we talked about previously, we've got a sense of what our civic engagement and participative democracy ought to look like uh, and what role community media can uh, uh, provide uh, develop in terms of supporting and helping and assisting a more engaged uh, sense of civic engage participation but also in terms of our sense of individual identity and uh, group identity so where we feel that uh, our media represents us as a collective either in our locality our communities of interest our communities of identity our, our ethnicity our gender our sexuality those kind of things um, so it's kind of you know, community media plays a, a very important role in the way that some of these um, issues can or might be shaped uh, but it's it's pushed to the margins largely because of the kind of dominance of corporate and state-run and commercial-run media and these are all issues that we've kind of covered in the past. But what we want to look at in this section and what we'll spend a lot of time looking at next year is the way that we think about social problems. So, you know, poverty, um, so looking at kind of how people are blamed for being poor. We look at personal accountability, so the kind of elements of, if you like, hyper-individualism and consumerism. And we look at kind of where government comes in, in into play to... Uh, provide frameworks and to challenge and to set up the, um, the, the the structure within which social goals are achieved and identified and measured. Uh, maybe not in that order, though. <laughs> it's like, you know, kind of, what is it? Identified, achieved and measured. That would be the right order. So one of the challenges is to look at uh, uh, social issues, but to not take them at face value and to think about the relationships that inform many social issues and the bonds or the, 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 the fraying of those bonds, those social bonds, uh, which otherwise would define a society. So things like, you know, kind of how, where, where, in which way do we work? What are the work patterns? And we're going through a period which seems to be about kind of, you know, the gig economy, about a kind of de- um, a casualization of workforces and this is a, a trend which has uh, uh, started a long time ago but job security housing security social security are deemed to be less um, less that the, the, it's harder to provide these services for us in the current framework of thinking although it's perfectly possible to provide them should we have the political will to do this and it kind of ties in with uh, health and well-being factors. Uh, so those who live in poverty are most likely to suffer from poor health, poor mental health, poor living conditions. Um, but also, can, you know, the kind of areas in which people are affected by poverty and by marginalisation, whether that's because of their educational attainment, language skills, uh, economic uh, uh, 
op uh, opportunities, then there's a kind of you know community cohesion also breaks down, and we don't want to be no nostalgic. I think we talked about in this previously. We don't want to be nostalgic and say that everything was great when it was like you know kind of when you could leave your back door open and neighbours would pop around. It wasn't. You know, there's a lot of myths about this kind of sense of community. So we want to think about what the kind of um, framework is in which our sense of community comes from and often it's overwhelmed by a kind of level of negativity which comes out of mainstream media which reports on the negative reports on crime reports on uh, uh, addiction problems reports on you know so many issues which you kind of you would be mistaken to believe that the world is a terrible place and everybody in it is vile and horrible if you read certain newspapers and watch certain TV programmes. So there's a shaping of our view of the world. Can we use community media as a tool to challenge some of those negative views? And I'm not saying paper over the cracks because we need to embrace the problems, analyse them and offer solutions for them. But the alternative nature of some of the solutions that we offer need to challenge some of the deeper and you know kind of promoted uh, the, the kind of strongly held views about the people at the top know best an autocratic and technocratic approach through privilege and through uh, social status rather than a grassroots democratic deliberative form of engagement with people so we've kind of got a you know it's kind of at the moment our media really promotes a sense of indignation and you know with this whole fake news debate and kind of the 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 the, the um the echo chamber uh, way that we communicate on social media is something which really kind of represents back to as a sense of what we already confirm as our prejudices and this has a massive impact on our sense of identity, the way that we're represented as different kinds of groups, whether we regard ourselves as conservative or progressive. Uh, I'm massively progressive in some ways, but I'm also increasingly conservative in others uh, because, you know, kind of risk. How do we manage risk as a society? How do we debate change and understand change and discuss change and risk in the same way when, you know, some of the debates, we, we, we get promised that there's no alternative to the kind of reforms, economic reforms that are brought in. And of course, there are alternatives. There's always alternatives. So, you know, we'll look at what some of these ideas are and we'll draw on the uh, phil the, the kind of philosopher, the, the political th uh, Michael Oakeshott, who uh, talked about these ideas in terms of what he calls universitas and uh, uh, societas, in terms of a kind of society which gets along together and kind of emerges, or one that's planned, a universitas, one that is kind of structured and organised, and there's five-year plans, and we, you know, we 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 run it like a machine, or we run, you know, we allow it to exist like an ecology, if you like. And where do we fit within these models? Because there's different economic. Uh, 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 modes that we can operate under and particularly this is about addressing issues of sustainability and this is going to be a big uh, element of what we cover in the second year is the idea of kind of what provides the groundwork and the framework for thinking about sustainable community development uh, urban infrastructure healthcare planning uh, uh, pollution um, transport issues housing issues there's all these very dominant civic issues, where and how are they being discussed? Who engages in these issues and how do people engage in these issues without it being caught into some kind of a, you know, a kind of battle between a, an antagonist and a protagonist uh, in kind of the way that the BBC tends to frame social issues? Is there an alternative way to provide support for voices which challenge and address issues of social diversity and social change and social inequality without it having to be framed, if you like, in a kind of uh, tick box kind of way. Right, the notes for this are available on the DMU Commons wiki. Just go to wiki.our.dmu.ac.uk. If you want to carry on the conversation, just go to talk .our.dmu.ac.uk, start your own topic or join in one of the existing topics. There's plenty of material that's been shared on the, on, on the, the, DM, the, the discourse platform uh, for you to read and catch up on things. But I'll see you at the lecture.